Welcome to Nevada County Online. I'm Susie Daggett, one of the Coco Co's. Uh, Corianne is over there doing something very important. And Machen will not wander in a minute. I understand there's a little issue with parking, so thank you for those who hiked. We'll have a few more people coming in. And our greeter, Laura, was not here today, so we don't have the name badges. So if you wanted to say, hey, you, that's going to work today. All right? So I'd like to know who's new at Nevada County Online today. You. Okay. Oh, wonderful. And shout out how you found out about us. Oh, Bob from Score. Yeah. What was that? Bob. Oh, Bob from Score, yeah. He's a very big, big mouth. We like that. <laughs> how did you find out about it? A friend told me about it, and then I went online and signed in for it. Okay. So Who else? Who's new? Meet up. Meet up? Um, Nita? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we like that friends spreading the word because we're a very big meetup group. We have 380 members, I think, right now. And um, usually we have between 50 and 60 people come and hear what we're doing. Who has a win about what's going on with them online where they something wonderful has happened with their business? Aha. <laughs> Well, I think our online store website is launched more or less. We're not it is. I was there. Yeah, it, it, it works. It's out as functional. We haven't done anything crazy with it. But yesterday, my husband and I got interviewed um, by Cancio Radio and kind of talked about it. And so that was really fun. And then I made my first purchase from China yesterday. Um, I'm ordering nut milk bags that are going to be part of my sales funnel. That is what in the you know, Ryan Dice world calls your tripwire. So I've ordered my tripwire and I'm starting to hopefully build my sales funnel. So Evelyn, tell us what your business is real quick. Um, feelingbettereveryday.com and it's an online store selling raw organic food, kitchen products. Um, we have a blog where we share recipes, our own personal story about health and um, and just, you know, things that we find that are cool online and we have a Facebook page that goes with it, facebook.com slash feeling better every day. Great. So, come see us. <laughs> Corian, do you have something to say? Well, let's do more wins. More wins. More, so this is the section, in case you're new, where if you want to share something that you've been working on, like Evelyn just did, that's working well for you for online marketing, or if you have any questions of things that you need to, problems that you need to solve to be more effective online. So, anyone else? Anything? Hi, my name is Nico. Nico works at Stone House, a bar restaurant event center. And since our our NCM line, I launched the Facebook and ran on about 3,100 likes for my business. Really? Stone House Old Brewery. So I love it. But the the question is, sometimes I cannot send out invite. They block me. I guess they, they think I invite too many. I have like sometimes two events a day, live music earlier hour and late night dance parties. So what did I do? Have All I right, anybody a Facebook expert who can help her with unblocking? If so, instead of doing it right here, talk to Nico afterwards. Anybody have that experience, expertise? I, I got blocked because I sent out quite a few requests and then I found out my account had been hacked. Oh. So we have been sending out hundreds of requests, mm -hmm. so you might want to check. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Good. Anybody else have a win? Yes. I um, was not able to get online with my Google account for a long time. Uh, my address for Aloha Healing Touch Massage was not cutting up on the map. So I called Google, and they were awesome. They helped me get you on. You actually up. found a person? Yeah, they have really good customer service. Good. They were all over the top with me. Um, and I was online and on the map within five minutes, and it worked out great. Okay. Well, that sounds like a really good segue into our Google speaker. Okay, well, we saw a couple of Oh, we saw them. I always forget what we have to do. That's why, that's why there's three of us, because we only have small brains. <laughs> okay, big brain guy. Half embodied in both of us. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is to introduce the group, especially for anyone that's here new. Uh, we are Nevada County Online. We are the largest business meetup group in Nevada County. We bring in a speaker like Michelle. That means quality, knowledgeable experience once a month. 
to discuss a variety of internet marketing topics. So we cover things from web design to LinkedIn to Facebook marketing, etc. Uh, next month we have Penny Pearl, who is a longtime member and been really good contributor to this group, discussing LinkedIn. So that will be in May, I don't know the date, but fourth Tuesday of the month here. Uh, a couple housekeeping things. First of all, please do not park in this upper parking lot unless you really need to. If you have physical ailment or a reason that it's difficult for you to walk, feel free. But the library has specifically asked us to keep this parking lot for their library patrons. So if you can park along the street coming up or down in the lower parking lot, that is preferred. Uh, and that also means expect it to be busy here. So if you can get here a few minutes early, just means that you can get everybody trickling in before 11. Uh, we need to be out here uh, of this room at 12 o'clock sharp, and ideally 12, a few minutes, 12.30 12, 30 30. sharp, which means ideally a few minutes early so the next group can come in and set up. Feel free, considering that it's turned into such a nice day, to spend some time outside networking, talking, whatever you might want to or, do. Or the other <coughs> room, the lobby is fine too, but we do have to, if the next group comes in and they, they, um, they need to set up, so we need to get out. So if I'm a little pushy at 12.31, <coughs> please understand, I have a job. Hi, Machen. You're going to come up to There's the side and you're still Coco. lurking on. in the back. You're doing great. No, we don't. we're not. <laughs> uh, you look like you're doing great. As far as sponsorship goes... Penny's on her way. I just saw her trying to find parking. Great. So, so sponsors on the way. So we'll do that, Michelle, after you, you've done speaking. Um, so a couple of other things just to, before we get started with Michelle. This is a volunteer, collaborative-driven group. The idea that we can support each other, that we can solve each other's problems, that we can assist with our experience and bring up our, you know, make everyone more successful. So I encourage people to enjoy that atmosphere. Along that line, if you have any suggestions for a speaker, please talk to me. If you have any interest or you could suggest somebody who might be interested in sponsoring the meeting, Sponsor is given five minutes to talk about their business, introduce us to that, and usually we do a raffle as well. And overall, uh, I really want to welcome everybody here. So, let me give Michelle a, an introduction. I'll have my notes, but I don't think I really need them. Uh, I met Michelle because she was involved in another business meetup in Sacramento. And when I was taking over the speaking coordinator role, that was part of my outreach, and that really has turned into a very nice professional collaboration. And it started through LinkedIn, where I simply said, hey, I'm speaking coordinator for this group, want to talk to you about your experience with Meetup. And from there, it became a conversation where we've done, I've asked you to come in and consult on projects, we've talked about a lot of different business things. So Michelle's business is called Virtual Business Systems. Marketing. I was thinking of this system. Specializing. So Michelle works with businesses to be more effective with your social media marketing, whether that's through your blogging and topic, uh, topic outreach, or content marketing, or Facebook. And I know from working with her personally, she is very skilled and very experienced there. So she has information if you want to talk to her afterwards. I think that there's a lot that we'll be covering today, but there's also a lot for developing that relationship. Uh, and today's topic. We're really talking about Google and the essentials there. There's so many free tools from Google and low-cost tools. Uh, we'll be doing a presentation. Doug and I have been collaborating for Hangouts, for an example. Today, Michelle's going to be running the gambit and showing us how we can do everything from becoming a Gmail power user to creating surveys to using Google Plus for your marketing. So, Michelle, take it away. Thank you for coming. quite a big group here, so I'm happy to have you here. Um, as far as Google, we've all heard of Google, uh, at least at this point. You know, you hear people, oh, did you Google that? Because now it's a verb instead of a thing. So Google has spread its wings and it's into all sorts of things. I was at a, a birthday party last Friday and one of our friends just bought Google Glass. So we all had our little try-on with Google Glass, and that's glasses that is similar to an iPhone in your glasses. So just a really interesting um, technology that Google is coming out with. And as Karyan said, Google has loads of free tools. They also have some paid tools. 
there, what we're talking about today will be the free tools. Um, in terms of Google Business, uh, we'll get a little bit into that because they have um, some apps that you can use, but those are um, more on a paid basis. And I'm a little bit challenged today because um, there were some uh, technical glitches. So I'm working off of my iPad. I will be supplying this presentation. It has all the links embedded, but I'll be supplying the presentation to hurry on for you all to have. So, uh, and if you have any questions after this presentation, or once you read it and had more questions, I'm available to answer those questions for you. Um, as Corian said, my business is virtual business marketing. I've been in business since 2003, and I provide uh, marketing services businesses and I have worked with clients all over the world so being remote is kind of a neat thing and I was able to raise my kids at home and I didn't have to uh, go out and do a job. Um, I'm also the executive director of Social Marketing Rx which is a grassroots uh, leadership group that I put together very similar to what's here and it has um, had many iterations and currently we are in the process of uh, talking about sponsoring the Huda, and uh, has nothing to do with uh, country music or anything like that. But uh, Huda is, I don't know if any of you have heard of the Tweet Up, Sacramento Tweet Up in Sacramento? Well, have you ever heard of Twitter? Okay, so if you've heard of Twitter, there are um, meetups for Twitter called Tweet Ups in Sacramento. And now with the advent of Hootsuite, which is a social media dashboard, um, I'm an ambassador for the North American region, one of many. There are um, many throughout the, the world, but I happen to be the one for Sacramento. And we're putting together a hood up, and it will be an educational workshop. And uh, so we're in the midst of organizing that. But here we are talking about essential tools to organize your business. Uh, and how that relates to marketing is leveraging your time. You don't want to be doing so many things every day that it takes up your time to then market your business or to serve your clients. So we're going to um, cover the essential tools. And um, one of the tools that I use a lot is Gmail. Now, a lot of people think Gmail's free. Who has a Gmail account here today? Okay, so, and are most of you or all of you using it for just the free email account? Do any of you have your business account also inside of there? You. Okay, you can have a business account within the free um, account, and I can uh, give you a little bit of information about that. Who has uh, any extensions? Do you know what extensions are? In Chrome? In, well, there's Chrome extensions, and then there are also the lab. Um, okay, so a few of you. We'll get into extensions and what that means for you, and it will help you uh, to enable your Gmail account to be more powerful than it currently is. Currently, it's just this, you know, if you're using just the free version with no extensions, it's just, basic, it's just a basic um, account. And then we'll also get into a little bit with the calendar. The calendar is very simple, but it can also be very robust. You can actually build a calendar and host it on your website if you want to uh, have events posted, and, and there are a number of other things that you can do. And then Google Drive. Google Drive was called Google Docs. Uh, up until a few years ago, and Google Docs is essentially a free version of Word, a free version of Excel. It's not Microsoft, but it's a free. They're free versions of a word processing document like Word, an Excel spreadsheet, PowerPoint, and so on. And now they've called it Google Drive because there's a storage component similar to Dropbox. Uh, there's also um, an, a component within Google Drive where you can create your own forms, and it has a link, and you can send it out via email. You don't have to use SurveyMonkey or some of these other paid versions. You can um, have that um, all for free, and you can set these forms up either on your um, site or you can direct people to those. So those are some of the things that we're going to be talking about today. So I'm not going to get into everything, and part of it is I, with my laptop, I was going to be kind of going between the internet and the presentation. So. Uh, so some of the things that we are going to talk about today, we're not really going to talk much about the configuration of your inbox, but there are some things that uh, may be interesting to you. 
Um, who here thinks that they're a Gmail ninja, and at what level do you think that you are? Are you a white belt, green belt, black belt, or a master? <laughs> Don't even know what that is. So white belt is introductory. So if you're anybody familiar with karate or anything like that, it's introductory. You're at the basic level. You know, you get a, you know, you just use it for personal use. If you're a green belt, then you're using maybe some of the, you know, some of the features uh, that would enable you to, uh, you know, the labs and some of the other things that we'll be discussing. And if you're a black belt, you pretty well have a handle on maybe you have your business account in Google and you are able to maneuver through there and use it very effectively for yourself and your business. And if you're a Gmail master like me, then you probably know all the ins and outs and you can get around and it's, it's a fabulous tool. Some people are a little afraid of Google because it's so integrated. I have a client right now in the UK and she hates Google. And I said, why do you hate it? I said, if you have a calendar, you know, then you can share the calendar with all of us. If you have your Gmail account, then we can send and receive, you know, invitations and uh, for events and meetings and things like this. And she's just like, I don't like the whole integration. So while I'm a Mac person, because I've got all my Apple pieces here today, um, I don't use the iCal, which is the calendar for Mac. And, you know, so there are definitely different schools of thought. It's also much more universal with Gmail. Um, so uh, there is a guide, and um, it's in this, it's, it'll be right here, so it's an active link. When you get this PDF document, uh, either you know, later today when I give it to Corian or next couple days, you can click on it, and it's a two-page document, and it really gives you a full view of where you are in this uh, ninja system. And it will give you pointers and give you tips and other tools, and uh, it's just a really kind of neat way to to kind of look at it and see where you are in the mix and how you can add new features. And we'll talk about some of those today. Now in terms of Google Business, there are some additional features for Google Business. You can have your domain name, mine is Virtual Business Marketing, and I can have it hosted in Google Apps, and I can have all of my team members have <coughs> Susie Jones at or whatever, and I can have all of my business emails in one dashboard and manage it that way. Um, it's a $5 per user, I think, um, at this point, uh, at least last I checked. And it gives you uh, quite a number of features that you don't get even in Gmail as a power user. So it's just a little bit more robust, and if you have a big team, it may be worthwhile. Yes. Is that a monthly fee? Or is it's a monthly fee. It's a monthly fee. It's five, yeah, it's five dollars a month, and it's it is I believe per user. Last I checked. Any other questions? Same, same thing. Okay, you're on the same way. Okay. Um, and and as this gal said over here, Google has great service. Um, I experienced it myself, and they really do. There is a phone number. You kind of have to go through and answer some questions and if this isn't you know my if this isn't answering my question click 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 so there's a few clicks and then um, and then you get a phone number now maybe I'm mistaking eBay with this is it where you click to call or are they or is it there is a link where they call you um, I know eBay has both or one or one of the other I'm pretty sure I put my phone number in and they call me yeah so it's similar to eBay where you put your phone number in and then you wait and it's like not even a minute. It was like, it, for me, it's always been super fast. And Google has been very helpful. I've worked with clients getting their um, places on the map for Google Places and uh, it worked out very well. Um, Can I make a comment? Just so yes. people are aware, uh, Facebook is opened up in Chico, a response mm -hmm. center at Google is going to be going in with a thousand people so they'll be even better coverage. Uh -huh. Uh, that's probably the next six months. Thank you. So, so typically this is the standard view when you log into Gmail. And most people will see, you know, you've got, you know, how many emails you have, the dates, and, and all of these things. Then you have some, you know, bars on the left-hand side. When you become a power user, you can fill up this side here, or you can move that bar over here, and you can customize the view. You can also customize it so that if you want it to look a certain way and have a theme, 
My colors in virtual business marketing are similar to Google's, but I don't have the um, the red, white, you know, and uh, yellow or green. So um, you can customize the themes. You can make it all your own. They have some that are inside of that as well. Um, but the, the really great thing I have to say is um, when you go here to um, it's changed a little bit, um, so please forgive me. Some of my things are actually a little bit dated, but so I've been teaching this course for a couple of years now. Um, so instead of mail settings and mail help now, when you click on this little cog wheel in your email, um, it's going to say settings, and then there's going to be some other things here as well. And under settings, that's where you're going to want to spend a lot of time. Now with this, uh, I don't know if you can see this too well, um, again, if not, you will receive the, um, uh, the documents, so you'll be able to look it up close. But there are tabs, again, all along the line up here. Can we and, turn off the light? Oh, that might help. Mm -hmm. A little bit better. And Michelle, I've just got a quick question for the group. How many of you who have Gmail have not go in, gone into the settings at any point? You have not gone into settings? Okay, so a fair amount. Um, so some of the settings. One setting that I didn't, that I don't show here, is a brand new setting. If you, one thing I want to segue from that is if you're getting an email from people from Google Plus or email that you don't know where it's coming from, in the settings here, um, it's down. I think around this area. It doesn't show on this slide right here, but it'll say Google email. And, or Google Plus, and you can turn it off so no one from Google Plus can send you an email. It's a great tool for business because if you are a business and you have a Google Plus page, which is very similar to Facebook, and you're marketing on there and you're posting and all these things, anyone that you add to your circles in Google Plus, you can send them an email. It's an unsolicited email, and it can be really annoying. <laughs> but then, from a business standpoint, if you're trying to, you know, send some send an event invitation out to all of these people, it's a good way to connect with those people on an individual basis. They think it's special coming from you because it's a one-on-one. -on -one. So, if you want to turn it off, all you have to do is come in here to settings, and it's under this general tab, and it's around this section here. It's probably like the eighth or ninth one down. It's not on this slide, so I apologize. Um, but the, the main thing is setting up your account so that it's more user-friendly for you. And you can change how many, um, how many emails show up. I changed mine so it's, a full, it's just the view. I don't want to scroll forever. So I don't know if anybody likes to scroll anymore. But, so I changed mine to about 15. I don't have it set to 25, so my screen view is how many emails I have. And then, as you can see, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you have chat notifications. So if you use Instant Messenger and you use the Google Instant Messenger, you can have the chat notifications come on or off, and that will be a little pop-up if somebody wants to ping you and send you an instant message. And so there's a lot of great tools in here. I use all of these stars because I'm such a color person that I want to star something red or purple or whatever based upon how important it is to me. And you can sort your inbox by stars or how important, and so there's a lot of great features in here that you'll be able to use. There's also um, other sections in here. Uh, the one that you might be interested in would be the signatures, although I will share that I don't use this. I use an extension. I pay for an extension because mine looks professional. This one, you have very limited um, features in here. As you can see, it's, uh, you only have a little bit of formatting options. But if you do want to use it, you can. And then down here, nice uh, vacation autoresponders. I don't typically use those. My clients, I alert them in advance. Partially because of spam, I don't really want people to um, know that I'm out of town. <laughs> What's a, what's a vacation autoresponder? What does it do? Uh, well, if you are if you are out of the office for, let's say, a week, and you want to, um, you don't want anyone to, you want everyone to know that you're not available. So if clients forget you're not available or whatever, they will receive this in their inbox as a response immediately after you send their email. 
send an email to them. Does everybody understand what an auto, a vacation autoresponder is then? Does that answer your Yes. Just a little side comment. That can be used for many more things than just a vacation Absolutely. concept. So that can just be considered an autoresponder. Mm -hmm. And then you can set it up to do all kinds of marketing to anybody who accidentally hits you with an email or whatever. Good point. Yes, you're, you're very right. Um, I, I don't use it much, but yes, that is a good point. I use a one in a shopping cart. Sure. So there's, but this is a free tool here that you can use. And you can send a response right here. Only send a response to people in my contacts. So if it was spam, they won't get it. So those are some features here. Um, also attachments. Um, you can also use a, um, uh, this feature here as um, a way to uh, make sure that your attachments are always, um, what am I trying to say? Sorry, get a little. Um, like for instance, if you're if you're drafting an email and you say, oh, please see the attached, there are, um, there are keywords like attached and it will pop up and say, oops, you forgot to send the attachment. I mean, who's done that? I've done that like a hundred times, right? And then you're like, oops, I forgot to send it. Here it is. And so now you've sent two emails to the same person. Um, who here is um, has is real familiar with Outlook? Okay, so some of you. Um, I used to be a huge Outlook fan, and then I went to Gmail, and everything changed. So uh, it was the lingo that changed, really. I had to learn a new way of, of thinking. So labels, I don't remember now what labels used to be called because I'm so ingrained in Google, but labels are like, are like the folders. So if you wanted to create a pri you know, pri primary labels and sub-labels. So like I have clients, and then I have old clients, and then I have prospects, and so you can have them in a tree underneath um, any of your folders. Um, and I'm also big on color coding, and you, you can color code, yes? One thing that ought to be mentioned about uh, labels, uh, it's far superior to folders because you could put three and four and five labels on something. It's like okay. having the same thing yes. in three, four, or five. That is true. Yeah. Um, that's very true. So I'm not sure if all of you heard that, but you can have more than one label attributed to an email. So for instance, with mine, uh, I have one for bills and receipts. However, I want to tag, essentially, I'll label my client. So I'll, it'll be labeled as my bill or, re or a receipt, and then it'll be John Doe client. And it could be something else as well that's attributed to that. So I can have more than one label attributed to an email. How do you have your setup? Uh, well, I just have a lot of labels, but there's times when uh, I haven't really used the sub-labels. Mm -hmm. But uh, the handy thing is, if I have multiple labels on something, and I'm searching by label, yeah. in Outlook, you know, you might have put it here, you might have put it here, you might have put it here, and you've got to search through all these places. Yeah. Here, I, it's just everything's in one big inbox mm -hmm. for years. Yeah. And uh, it, the searching is so, so much better. Yeah, the search feature in here is amazing. You can just put in, you know, well, I can't show you right now, but if you were in your Gmail account, at the top there's a search box, and you can search by all sorts of different things. You can just put in shopping, and everything that has the word shopping in the body of the email will, will pop up. So, it could, and then you can refine that a little bit further if you're not looking for just shopping, you're looking for something more specific. So here's a little bit more about labels, and here are um, some of your standard ones. Buzz is no longer, so you can see how long I've been teaching this. <laughs> um, Buzz was similar to Twitter, but it never took off. Um, so you have your standard inbox, you have starred, and you can hide these. So it's really nice, so if you don't want to see you know, all mail, or you don't want to see chats, or anything like that, you can show or hide them. So when you're, when you're in your email view on the left-hand side, you'll have a whole scrolling you know, line of all the things, uh, all the folders. And, um, and as I said, you can show them or hide them if, if um, you choose. And then these are ones that you create your own. Uh, these ones were ones that uh, come kind of standard. You can edit them or you can just delete them. And uh, so 
It's also changed a little bit now too with your standard inbox because now you can have it where you edit it and you have your inbox, you have promotions, you have updates, forums, social media, and that sort of thing. And it really freaked out a lot of marketers because people weren't, they weren't getting everything. And even my mom, who's 72, she's like, what happened to my Joann's Fabrics emails? And they ended up in her um, forums because that's where kind of not really junk, but, you know, ongoing um, shopping, uh, just different things kind of ended up there. And you can change where those folders are. You can turn those off if you still want the one inbox. But I like it because if I want to search social media, all my social media stuff is already filtered. Google set that up, so if Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn um, come into my inbox, it automatically gets put into that tab of social media. So it can be nice if you want to sort it, um, sort it that way, or you can turn off those features to have your one um, inbox. Any questions so far? Um, this is the area where if you wanted to add your email account, so you'd go into settings, you go to general labels, and then accounts and import. And so here's the standard one for this account, but if I wanted to add another account with a different address or a pop account. Now, it used to be where a pop account was not available in Yahoo or Hotmail or MSN or any of those. You could only have it would be VBM classes at MSN or whatever, and that's all you could have in your MSN box or Hotmail and whatnot. Now you can actually have, I could have VBM classes at virtualbusinessmarketing.com. Or if my, whoops, sorry about that. Um, but I can have a number of domain uh, email addresses in here. And, uh, and so it just runs just as if it were um, you know, hosted. I use GoDaddy. I don't know if anybody else is familiar with GoDaddy. <coughs> okay, so instead of going to the GoDaddy webmail and checking your email address there, you just come into Gmail. So it's a nice way to not have to log into two places. You can use your Gmail account as your dashboard for all your email. Um, and so this is pretty self-explanatory. Anybody have any questions about this? I can give a bit of an experience. I've just linked my AOL, which I've had for 40 years, yeah. into Gmail, and my address book in AOL was hacked. Oh, mm -hmm. no. And so it, I had to delete all my entries so it wouldn't happen again. Yeah. So I've lost 40 years worth of email addresses. Uh, so mm -hmm. just be wary of linking, mm -hmm. because if, uh, Google does actually get all your contact information. I talked to both Google and AOL. Mm -hmm. So there is some problems. Yeah, and you know, with hackers and spammers, mm -hmm. it's bound to happen. Um, I know my Yahoo account gets hacked occasionally, or it gets spoofed, and then I have mailer demons that come. I I remember one day, we call a couple months ago, I got probably a hundred mailer demons, and it looked like I was sending all this spam out, but they just got a hold of my email. A little complicated, but they didn't really actually hack into my account and send them from my account. Yes. So one one tactic to guard against that, I mean, if you if you're bound on giving giving all your passwords so they can all be hacked in one place, mm -hmm. and there's wisdom around that. Yeah. You can back up Google contacts. You can back up AOL contacts. Mm -hmm. You can back them up to your local machine. So if they're stolen, you can at least replace them. Mm -hmm can unsteal them, yeah. but you can replace them. And there are means to do that uh, with, within Gmail and mm -hmm. contacts. It's yeah. good to do once a month. Yeah, yeah, backing up is a big deal. I back up constantly. So back, back up, back up, back up, which is why I have all my tools here today in case I need one. Um, any other questions about that? Yes. So I understand on the heart, I can't remember what it's called, the thing that happened last week with the yes, heart. Yes, the heart lady. Okay. Thank you. Um, that Gmail was one of the suspected things, and I did not change my password on the advice of my IT guy. And I, I don't have any issues, but I'd just like to hear what you have to say about that. Well, I'm like this gentleman over here. I change my passwords frequently. I use a tool called RoboForm, and it saves all my passwords. It's a paid service, and it's something that I can generate 
random passwords, so I don't have the same password for every account. Mm -hmm. um, and if I did, then I'd be more vulnerable. Uh, so I'm of the school of thought of having a very secure random password. It doesn't have a word in it. A lot of people will leave. I mean, I think the top password is password123, something like that. And, you know, there are, are a lot of reasons why not to have those types of passwords. You really need to have, you know, characters in there, the exclamation points, you know, at signs, whatever, upper or lowercase, and definitely no English, you know, well, not in necessarily English, but no word that uh, can be picked up by um, a bot or, you know, a spam. And how about spaces between words? Uh, you can't have spaces between words with a password. You oh, can do I an do. underscore. No, I have spaces. Spaces? Mm -hmm. It depends on the service. Some okay. services are not Yeah. I'm looking at the topics you're going to cover and looking at the clock and going, I hope you get a chance oh, to get through yeah. all of them. Well, let's fast forward. Thank you for that. Sometimes I get a little sidetracked. So um, I'm not going to go through all of these then. Um, I'll go through filters real quick. Because um, out of all of these that are up here, I think filters and then labs are probably the two that we'll go over. So filters are similar of what you would have as rules in Outlook. And filters are really great because if you get a ton of email from, let's say, a specific client, or you are, uh, you get, like for instance, if you get a ton of orders, you don't necessarily want them flooding your inbox. You want maybe a specific folder that all the orders go in and it's already there. So you don't then have to move it and it doesn't waste your time. And then you'll have a little number by that folder that says how many new ones if you haven't opened. Um, or if you've, you know, if you've opened all the recent ones and then today you log in, you've got 10 more. Um, it'll show a number there. So filters are a great way to have rules for a specific box. Um, or a folder that you want to continually go to a specific thing. You can also make it so that uh, if you want to mark something as red, you want, um, I don't know why you necessarily do that if it's, if it's coming in your inbox, but you have all sorts of uh, tools here that you can use for Google uh, email. And you can apply those to automatically delete, you can have it go directly to spam if for some reason you're having an issue with an email that keeps coming in and, and you're not able to um, you know, get it um, to unsubscribe for some reason. So there's a lot of ways that you can um, use the filters that I think are very useful. And Michelle, let me mention one other thing, just keep jumping in with user tips. Mm -hmm. When you receive an email on the right hand side there's a little pull down menu. If you go there, it gives you an option for filter messages like this. Yeah. So it's a very quick shortcut that if you see a message from somebody or someone that you want to do for a filter, you can access to it directly without having to go through settings. Yes. Thanks. Um, okay, so go through the labs real quick and then I'm going to switch to the calendar and some of the other options. So the labs, again, it's under settings and it's way over here, kind of a uh, little right to the right of the middle. Now all these, there's a, it scrolls down for quite a long time. And you can just go through, they all have a little description. If you enable it, it's going to be enabled right away and you'll, you'll hit save at the bottom and they will be saved in your settings. Um, if you decide you don't like it, just come back in here and disable it. It's as simple as that. Some of these I have enabled constantly where uh, you, know, you can see here I've got the apps, I've got the, the background send, the background send is really nice because if I don't want to stay in that window until the email sends, it just automatically goes. It's kind of um, a neat thing. And then there's also, I don't know if it's in here on this view or not. The other thing that I really like about labs, I have one lab that I really, really like. And that's where um, if you have an image and you, and you copied it from Facebook or something like that, you can right click and save, or you and or you can just right click and copy, and you can actually drag it into your email, and it's right there. You don't have to download it, save it, go insert, blah blah blah. You can just drag it on there, and it populates, and it goes right into the body of the email. So it's a really nice feature if you're just doing something quick and on the fly. And there's a lot of neat little features in here in the labs, and occasionally they update these, but I think they're really going more toward extensions nowadays. But those are some of the key features of the settings that I wanted to share with you today.
and we're just going to skip through the rest of this. These were the themes. Um, so if you want to, you know, make your uh, your email look cool. The neat thing about themes, if you do choose some of these, such as like turf or whatever, it'll change throughout the day. So do colors. There's one that's planets or something like that, and then it has um, a different time of day. So you'll have like a morning, and then you'll have an evening. A um, couple other real quick things. There are contacts and there are tasks that you can use in your Gmail email uh, in that dashboard as well. I don't use tasks much anymore because I use a project management tool, but if you just have some simple tasks and you just want to have reminders, you can set up tasks in your Gmail and it will just pop up in your email and you have little reminders and you can have it set on a specific date and, that's, um, and those sorts of things. So if you want those types of features in there, you don't necessarily have to send your, you know, you don't necessarily have to put it on the calendar to remind you, you can set up little tasks for yourself. So they are kind of nice and you can mark it complete and all of that. Um, with Contacts, you can set up groups. Uh, again, I'm not going to go too much into this um, as our time is getting a little short. But as you can kind of see, these are some of the ones that I have in mine. And I have, I, I do a lot of work with realtors, so there's a lot there. And I also taught at uh, Sacramento Association of Realtors. Um, so I have um, some students in these and some others. And so you can just segment those. And when you're drafting an email, you can start typing and it'll pull from any of your contacts, whether they're in groups or not. And you can import contacts, so if you have a list that's already in an in Excel format, you can import your contacts as well. So like earlier, if you, you know, if you back up your contacts and then they somehow go missing, you can import them back in. Yes. Can you, uh, how do you transfer your contacts from Outlook to uh, from Outlook, there are a number of, of steps that you have to do, but you would export it as a, uh, it's a .csv format. It's, it's essentially Excel, but it's instead of .xls, x now, or whatever it is, um, it's .csv, and that will translate right into here, and it's just a specific format, and then you import, and then it'll take you through like a little wizard. Extensions. This is my favorite. These are my favorite extensions. In the um, in this document, obviously, this is a clickable link. So if you want to go and you want to check out the web store, it's just chrome.google.com web slash web store. So you'll have this document. You don't necessarily have to take notes if you don't want to because you'll have this and you can just click right through to this and you'll be right at the web store. These are my four favorite uh, extensions. Reportive is a really cool one because you get to kind of, and here's where you can find extensions once you get there. It's a long list once you get to the web store. And then it's down here at the very bottom. So it's a little bit a little bit confusing. So when you get here, apps are is defaulted. So you just scroll all the way down and then your extensions are here. And then once you, oh, once you click on extensions, you have all of these categories. And then if you want other themes that are not currently in your Gmail account, you can add a few extra themes. But you can see there's all sorts of really cool topics here for you to add different functions to your um, to your Gmail. So Reportive. I don't have a whole lot here, but essentially if you use Reportive, like I do, as soon as I'm draft, as soon as I hit, um, or uh, add a contact to my email, that I'm, let's say I'm going to email Susie Jones, I start typing in Susie Jones, and her picture shows up on the right-hand side. Her Facebook, if she has one, LinkedIn, Twitter, feed, all these other things, so I can kind of spy on her if I don't really know her. <laughs> so it's kind of a neat little feature of who is this person and, and how can I um, connect with them. So for those of you who are wanting to connect with more people, this is a really good way. You don't have to be logged in um, to all of these different tools. You can click. I want to uh, like that person, or I want to connect with that person right from your inbox. 
You don't have to go and be in Facebook and all these other places. So it's a really neat way to utilize your inbox, your Azure dashboard. Uh, so you get a little bit of new information. Yesware is my favorite because, uh, for instance, I have, I have an attorney and I have some legal things go on and I needed to make sure, and I know a lot of realtors do too, and others who are in different fields where they need to see who's read an email or opened it. And so with Yesware, there is a free version and there's a paid version. The paid version is like $5 a month. It's really inexpensive. And you can track and analyze your email communications. So if I've sent something to somebody, like I sent an email to my niece the other day about her plane ticket so she could come out here from Puerto Rico. So I said, you didn't open your email. Well, how do you know? I use Yesware. And I know when she's opened it. I know the time. I know if she's using her, I, um, her iPhone or an iPad or a desktop, whatever. I can, learn, I can glean all of this really cool information. It, uh, if I used salesforce.com as my customer relation management tool, I can um, add, them to a, add them to the CRM right from Yesware, right from my inbox. I don't have to go to Salesforce. So you, if you're in sales or you track a lot and you want a, um, a way to track in Gmail, you can link it to Salesforce. You can get real-time feedback on every opportunity Opportunities have to do with sales and the sales funnel, um, more with Salesforce. And you also can create templates. So if you send a lot of the same kinds of emails to clients or new customers or anything like that, you can create that template. And you don't have to write it again and again and again. You also don't have to create a Word document and copy and paste and do all those tedious functions. It's right in there. You create it once and you can set it up. And, and, uh, and then you can... Um, there's just a lot of other features. Oh, I guess we have a <laughs> little news alert. Sorry. Uh, and then Write Inbox. I also use Write Inbox because I don't always want to send emails to my customers at 1 in the morning if I happen to be working late. So I want them to receive that email I drafted at 1 a.m. I want them to receive it at 7 a.m. So they don't know that I'm not working eh, late. Um, and it's also nice if I want to schedule an email to somebody as a reminder. I want to send somebody, hey, I, you know, we're supposed to meet for lunch next week. So these are some you know, ways that you can use this. And this is, there is a free and a paid version. And again, you can set reminders and follow up conversations. So if you sent an email and you go to Yesware and you say, hey, Joe didn't open up that email. And you can actually, be, um, at the same time you're sending it from, uh, from your email, and Yesware has a little checkbox that says I'm going to track it. You can also schedule a follow-up conversation. If he hasn't responded in three days, I'm going to send a follow-up. Um, or a little reminder to myself to follow up. And then this is another favorite. Remember how we talked about um, your, uh, your signature in Gmail and how it's, there aren't a lot of features there. You don't have a whole lot of... Um, of uh, ways to customize it. Well, why stamp? You can do that. You can use the free or the paid version. Again, I pay for it because I don't want the advertising on it. There will be a little, you know, from why stamp at the bottom if you use the free version. If you use the paid version, you can have the pretty Facebook icons, the pretty Twitter icon. You can have those all linked. So they're really tiny little Dot, you know, basically little, not dots, but little uh, tiny icons underneath if you want them to link to your social media and they're all proper size and they're linkable and all that. You can also set up where I'm very green. I don't use a whole lot of paper as you can see. So I have a, a notice at the bottom that's already pre-formatted inside of Ystamp and it is a little message and there's like four or five that you can choose from. It says, please think before you print and has a little tree. And it's very pretty and it, it stays there all the time. And if I want to change it, I can. I can also add quotes, historical things. It's just a really neat tool. Yes? Can you, in Gmail, you can't, can you set reminders and follow-up conversations? Or do you have to use the right inbox to do it? Um, you can't do it just from the basic Gmail. No. You would have to kind of set it up as more of a calendar type of event where 
it's more of an event in the calendar, and then it will remind you in an email. And so, yes, you can do that if you don't want to do that. But Yesware is for, has a free version, so I would I would recommend using Yesware. Um, so the Google Calendar, we'll get into that, and then um, how much time? We've got about. You've got about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, yeah. all right, I think I'm good. May I pose one question on yes. the previous slide? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since two of the four extensions talked, uh, uh, offered the feature of purportedly knowing when an email was opened, mm -hmm. have you independently verified that that is different from people just having message view enabled? In other words, um, do you, you know what I'm yeah. describe it from. It, it, to describe it more completely, some people do not see just a subject line. There. They actually see a truncated version. Which is the same as opening the message, yeah. which has all kinds of virus in it. But anyway, mm -hmm. I can't. Have you verified that Yesware and Write Inbox know the difference? I did. I have not. That's a really good question. I haven't thought about that, but I'll have to check into that now. I, well, I don't think they can know the difference personally. Yeah. But since you mentioned yeah. legal issues, yeah. I just, okay, thank Well, you. if it is a legal issue, they had the opportunity to open it, I guess. Or it was laying in the spam box, and the spam box had the opportunity to open mm. it, which they never look at because it's spam. That could be. So, anyway, I'll check you. that out. That, that's, a good, that's a good question. I've got to investigate that now. Um, okay, so Google Calendar. Um, <coughs> As I said earlier, I kind of live by my Google Calendar. I have it on my iPhone, my iPad, everywhere. So, if it, and I tell my kids and my family, if you don't see me write it down, it does not go in the brain. So I will likely forget. I have a terrible memory. So you can schedule events from your email. And unfortunately, I can't show you that right now, but when you're in your email, and it's open, and let's say you got, um, we'll use Susie Jones again, invited me to go to lunch with her next Tuesday at a, at a specific place. <coughs> or you're, you are going to watch a webinar, and they sent you the information from the webinar. From that email, you can click, there's a button that says more, and, at the, and in that menu, it'll say create event. You just hit create event, it automatically opens up a new tab, on your browser and now you're in your Google Calendar and your Google Calendar um, will have uh, an event that is open and you can edit it and then from that you can save it and set your reminders and things like that so from an email you can set up an event just from a click yes um, I use iCal because I can have it right there visible mm -hmm. I've been so frustrated with Google Calendar I cannot tell you how many times <laughs> I've just like thrown my hands up can I pull it onto my desktop so I can just pop it open like I do iCal? Or is that um, not possible? I, that's a good question as well. I don't know. You can subscribe to Google Calendar within iCal. Oh, okay. so. you're going to have to come to <laughs> Okay. Think that's Because I don't use iCal, as I said. I just I do it that this, way. So okay. you're the expert on that one then. I'm not my expert. I'll chase him. You're better than me already, well, I, so that's next. I think it's worthy of a whole separate session, just if the organizers are listening, because that particular import doesn't work all that well. But future session on calendar would be yeah. great. <laughs> calendar tools. Calendar tools. If so, you're not connected to Wi-Fi on um, with Google, then that won't update your calendar. If you can't, unless it's connected, you can't update your calendar, because the calendar is in the cloud yeah. on the, the drive. Yeah. That is true. That applies to all the document changes as well. You can't make them unless you're connected. Correct. Whereas with uh, Apple calendar, you can. Yes. Well, and if you're using Maps version, then it'll yeah. sync up at a later date. That doesn't. I don't think it syncs with um, Google Calendar. Does it? Yeah. It does. It does. It's two-way. Can we keep going? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Doug. But we'll, we'll do that another time. So you can also set up multiple calendars. So for instance, I have um, I have a team calendar that my team and I we have our 
we have different meetings, all these other things, and if I wanted to print out my calendar, I don't have. I can print out a, like a master calendar. So I can have a team calendar. When my kids were little, I had the soccer calendar and the Girl Scouts calendar and all this stuff because I was a troop leader and I was going insane. So I had to have all these different calendars. But sometimes it's nice to be able to turn those calendars off if I want to see, okay, what projects do I have with my clients. Okay, I just need to see the soccer calendar. And then if you want to overlay them all, you just click them and they all show. And so if you had five events in one day, you can see the conflict and then you can reassess your calendar. So I do like that. You can also share your calendar with other people, as I said with my team. You can also add calendar bling, which I like. So if it's um, invoicing day, I have a little dollar sign and you know there's other things there. Um, and then you can also embed your um, Google Calendar onto your website if you wanted to. Uh, again, I mentioned that earlier, and that's a really nice feature. I um, happen to have um, the Sacramento, let's see, the Drowning Accident Rescue Team in Sacramento. I don't know if any of you are familiar with them, but sadly they do a lot of more recovery than they do rescues in our riverways when people um, drive their cars in. Anyway, we have a calendar because they have fundraising events. <coughs> They have training events, they have all these things, and the team can get into the Google Calendar and update it anytime they want, and automatically it shows right up in the website. So we do that for our events, and we have a, a link to the event where they can register right from the calendar, and then it goes to one of the pages on the website. Um, scheduling um, events from your email, we already talked about that, and here's all the steps on how to do that. Skip through multiple calendars. We talked about that, uh, and there's a range of um, permissions as well. So if you have a calendar and you don't want them to edit the calendar, you just want somebody to see it, or just see you're free or busy, you don't have to show that. Oh, I'm going to the doctor, or oh, I'm going on a vacation, or whatever. You're just either busy or you're free, and so that's a nice way too. If it's a public calendar or you're sharing it with someone but you don't want them to see all of your information. Uh, calendar bling. Um, here's some things that you can do. I have a few extra calendars. You can search for calendars. So if any of you are sports fans, you can search by sport teams and it'll populate. I happen to have the weather. I happen to have the moon phases. And I happen to have, uh, let's see, Canada the UK and US holidays right in mind right now because I have clients in those other um, areas, those other countries. So if it's, if it's another country and it's a holiday, instead of showing up here like the same font, it's going to show like a block of green and then like white font or something like that. And so like for Easter I had three colors because I had Canada, the UK, and the United States. So holidays, if you have other region holidays, they'll be broken up that way. You can also, it's not, um, I don't think it's really in here, but um, I need to do a little screenshot at uh, some point, but like right here where it says like 12 p.m. picnic in the park, I could, um, there's like other little bling that I can put here and it could be like a little basket. Um, and they're just fun little things if you decide to do that. They're fun if you have kids and you're using a calendar for them. Um, public calendar, I'm not going to go too much into this because I have the information on how to do it. Uh, but you basically set, you create a new calendar if you don't want it to be your main calendar. Um, and you can create a calendar for your website with specific events. And um, there are ways to... Um, I've got the link in here uh, to publish that. So as I said, I'm not going to go too much into that. And if, for instance, you do get this document and you're confused and you want to do that, just call me. I'd be happy to help. Now, there are also Google Calendar Labs. So as with email labs, now there's Google Calendar Labs. So um, if you want to schedule an event and you have a client like I do in the UK, where it's very confusing, it's like, okay, is it eight hours? or? Because they also don't do daylight savings time at the exact same time we do. They did it three weeks later, and I, was, I, I almost missed a call. I was two hours or, or was an hour early or something. So there's, a, there's many times where it's kind of confusing. So the time zones were very helpful. And you can also uh, mark people optional 
or required for specific meetings and things like that. Um, rescheduling, oh here's your flare. That's the little flare right there. And there's more, but those are kind of fun little things. I don't ever really use that one, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> but if you're going to dinner or clients or birthdays, it's kind of nice. Um, it just triggers because if everything is the same color in your, in your um, calendar, you might miss something. So sometimes a little calendar blend makes it a little easier to stand out, especially if you don't want to forget somebody's birthday or anniversary. <coughs> Um, you, can, you can also show um, that you automatically decline events if you're already busy. You don't have to respond. So again, leveraging some of these tools, setting them up in advance, you don't have to um, you know, decline on your own. You can just let that um, automatically do it. And then there are gentle reminders, which I get on my, uh, on my desktop as well, where it just pops up. And you can also schedule your reminders in the calendar settings. So just like with your email settings, you have calendar settings. So on my iPhone, I get an SMS text of any events, and I can schedule it two weeks out, two months out, a day, 30 minutes. There's all different, even a minute. So you can schedule some a reminder up to one minute before the event happens. So it's a really nice way to you know, keep reminding you. And as I said, I forget, so I use it all the time. Um, let's see. Okay, so again, Google Calendar helps just as with the other help. Uh, it's just a really nice way to, um, you know, call if you have questions. They do have some videos. They have a whole plethora of help sections to answer questions on pretty much any topic, but if it's still confusing, then you can call them and they'll help you. Now, Google Drive, as I said, Google Drive used to be called Google Docs up until a couple of years ago. And I think they were trying to compete with, they were trying to compete with Dropbox. So now they have, they give you 15 gigs of space for free. So you can create, a, unlike Dropbox, where you cannot create a document, you can create a document in Google Drive because they have, uh, where is it? in the next slide, but you, as I said, they have a work processor, there's a um, <coughs> sheets, PowerPoints, all different types of things in here, and you can create documents, and you can actually work on a document at the same time somebody else is. And you can see them typing, it's kind of weird, it's like, ooh, somebody's in my computer. But it's a really neat way to collaborate if you're working on a project and somebody's sick, or you're in different time zones, and you need to work on something. It's a really great way to um, be able to save time and get things done quickly. And if you need more space, they'll give you more space, and it's cheap, two bucks a month. I mean, how, I mean that's a great way to do it. Um, and you can just go here to drive.google.com and get started. So that's pretty much it for Google Drive, that portion of it. And then I'll just quickly share um, Google Forms and Surveys. So this is just, I'm going to see if I can well, anyway, if you click on this link, it'll take you to um, uh, like a tour, or here's the tour here as well, but it'll take you on a tour of um, the forms and surveys, and you can do your, you can create your own form, and it's just a really easy way. Just fill in the box, you say, I want to, I want buttons. I want it to be a yes or no, and you have the different matrix of being able to ask a question and receive the answers that you want. You can also write, uh, download a report, and what I did is, in a, with a past client, uh, they had no form of lead generation. They didn't have an email capture form on their website. They didn't even ask the question when somebody would call on the phone. So how did you hear of us? So I made everybody in the whole company it was, it was mandatory, and they didn't like me for a while because I made them do this new task of asking. And it was just a few questions, but how did you hear of us? Where did you, you know, come from? Was it Google? Was it Bing? Was it the Yellow Pages? Because I was in charge of, of all the marketing, and we needed to know where people were coming from. Are we still going to spend yellow page, you know, money on Yellow Pages? Well, no, we ditched it. We were spending $20,000 or more a year on Yellow Pages. It was ridiculous. So we got rid of it, and now... And then we ended up doing Google pay-per-click and Google AdWords. 
So there was a lot more that we could invest because people were coming from Google hands down over their pages or anything else. So it's a good way to use a form for free and figure it out and to, um, to collect that data. And there's, you know, umpteen number of forms that you can use that are in there that are templates or you can create your own. So that's pretty much um, my presentation for today. Um, it, this does have how to create a form and some of the other things here. So um, I just want to wrap up and say, you know, if there's any more questions, yes. Yeah, you, you just mentioned two Google products that were better than, than the uh, Yellow Pages book, really. Uh, Google AdWords and Google, Ad yeah, AdWords. So it's like Google of AdSense used to be. AdWords? Ad What's words. the other one? Uh, well, it's just pay-per-click, which is basically the same thing. It's, it's all in, um, embodied in that. Um, but Google AdWords is when you go to Google and you see the two ads at the top and then you see all those ads running down the right-hand side, that's what you're paying for. And so... So thank you so much. I hope you got a lot out of today's session. And again, you'll receive the slides. You'll also, um, you know, like I said, feel free to call me. I'd be happy to talk with you. I'm super generous. And uh, if you have questions afterwards, just let me know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Mason, you want to come up? Sure. For those of you that don't know, I'm one of the co 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 leaders, <laughs> Mason McDonald. Um, we're going to have a drawing here. So if you don't have your business card in this cool little laundry basket, small take this seriously. You want to get your business card? Yeah, get your business cards in here. Um, we're going to have actually our speaker for next month is giving away two coaching opportunities on LinkedIn. So she's going to help you get your LinkedIn account set up and race ready so you can have an attractive profile to start attracting more business. I would do it. LinkedIn is a great tool. Can you help Michelle and I develop our relationships? Yeah. yeah, and I've LinkedIn. developed lots of relationships all over the world from LinkedIn. It's amazing. Same with Facebook. So, um, Penny, why don't you come up here and give us a little blurb of why you're the expert and how you're going to help people and what you're getting for trade your business card. Okay. Well, answering the question of why, uh, five minutes just isn't going to do it. But my name is Penny Pearl. My business is Veritable Coaching. I'm uh, International Coach Federation trained, and I market, uh, the services that I market is I train people on how to use LinkedIn for generating leads for their business. But I use it using the networking and personable skills that all of you have. So by the time that you learn about LinkedIn, you're using skills that you're familiar with using at a social event, and now you learn how to apply them online. Um, the, the areas that I concentrate in in my next presentation here is I'm going to work with you on the importance and how to create a great profile. I'm very conscious of that because my father was a photographer. <laughs> I was <laughs> How to create a great profile so that you can attract people to want to know more about you. And it's a professional profile. It's very different than Facebook. How many people here are LinkedIn users? How many people are active LinkedIn users? Okay, we're going to get you to be more active because it is your professional presence. And I'm going to share some statistics next month as to why you should be on LinkedIn. Then I'm going to talk to you about different features within LinkedIn that you can use as a tool to develop leads. My clients come from LinkedIn, people from different parts of the world, people locally. And the way you do that is um, it's having a great profile so that when people hear about you, they like what they see. And then it's also you reaching out. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. How do you reach out to your specific target audience? And then the third thing I'm going to cover and focus on is how to share. That's how you communicate, the different tools within LinkedIn that allow you to share effectively, not only with your connections, but 
a lot of your connections at one time. So there's some finesse in how you message. And then um, what I'm going to offer is two 45-minute coaching sessions on LinkedIn, which is, that's what this raffle is for, this correct? Is. Yep. Okay, so two 45-minute coaching sessions. And so it's going to be two different people. And we're going to focus on creating a real sizzling profile so that people are going to find you and they're going to want to connect with you. People in your target audience. How does that sound? Yeah. I'm going to start by asking you to share by telling your friends, your people you do business with, to attend NC Online next month and learn a lot about how to get new clients using LinkedIn. Thank you. Me? No, I would be great if I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I put my card in there, so. <laughs> okay. So the first person is water heaters only, Yana Carpenter. Oh, winner, winner. Okay. <laughs> All right, one more? Yep. There's one other thing I want to share with you. Global commercial David Franks. Oh, that would be me. <laughs> thank you. That was, that's wonderful. For video. Yeah, thank you. I, I really look forward to your meeting. Thank you. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to share with you, and it's going to be offered to everybody, is I work with a digital campaign platform. We're offering 100 days of free campaigns online with complete support, online support, talking with people, screen sharing, and it's a great tool. So that's going to be offered to everybody who attends. What's the name of that tool? Sample on. You know I know that. Some of the yes, questions I, I ask actually know the answers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm watching for that. Yes, okay. All right, thank you. I look forward to seeing all of you next week and your business friends. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, and we've got a few minutes to wrap up. There's one announcement uh, I wanted to make. Uh, we are in a partnership with a local organization called Sierra Commons. How many of you here have not heard of Sierra Commons before? Not heard of it. Good. For those of you that haven't, it is a co-working community. It is a campus where innovation happens. And it's located on Searle Avenue in Nevada City. You can find out more at sierracommons.org. On Wednesday, April 30th, they are hosting a, we are hosting, a open house mixer to show the facilities, to launch our new website, to introduce new members of the board of directors, including Brian Gillings and myself. And I really encourage you to come check it out. Uh, again, you can find out more information at sierracommons.org. It's a great place, and it's also an educational um, gem in our community. It provides a variety of different classes. There's a conference room that you can rent for any kind of business or presentations you might be doing. If you want to know any more information about that, you can talk to Brian or myself after this meeting. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention when we talked about the volunteership aspect. We are a volunteer group, and we open the leadership to anyone else who wants to get involved with Nevada County Online. So if you have something that you would like to bring to the table, some improvement you'd like to usher in, whatever it might be. We want you. Yeah. Or for example, uh, we talked about Hangouts last time, and Doug volunteered to do a presentation that we're going to work on together for Hangouts. So if you have a presentation, or if you want to roll, please talk to us. We're really open to that. So we need to be out of this room in nine minutes. So that means everybody's going to be out, but take but, a couple seconds down. But before you go, if you didn't donate, we get to pay for our websites. Corian has put the money out. We get to reimburse him. So if you have... Don't some, let that discourage you for donating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have to make this to mention. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, if you haven't donated, we really appreciate it because it keeps us going. And if you do want to volunteer, talk to any of the three of us. David's a volunteer. Um, Rachel. Rachel. Evelyn. Rachel. Evelyn. Matt. He only does tech though. He can't talk to you. Yes, he can. <laughs> Who am I missing? There's other volunteers. Jeannie was here. We really, Laura, really... Huh? Laura. Sorry. Laura was pretending to be here, but she didn't show up. But she's a really good volunteer. Doug is a volunteer. Um, so thank you all, and please, we would love to have you as a volunteer. Makes us all happy. Yes, John. 
what, what time was the thing at Sierra Conference on Wednesday? It is, sorry, it's from 5 to 7 p.m. On eight, Wednesday, April 3rd. And they really always have a lot of fun. Good people. Really, really, really good quality people. Don't talk about the igniticals. Just let everybody Brian, know. why don't you come up here for a moment? Um, Brian's not afraid of the spotlight, just in case you know Brian. I try not to be. <laughs> uh, we've decided we're going to put on our educational course, which is a six week course, which is with mentoring uh, for anybody who's starting a business. And we're actually starting it on May 14th. It goes on until uh, July, no, June 22nd, with one week in the middle of it. And about, um, I think it's June 3rd that we're not having a meeting, because that's by request of the students. So this is the sixth time, I think, that we've done this course. Yep. And this is for Sierra Cory and Corian, myself. We have uh, two other presenters as well. So it's uh, three hours on a Wednesday, and then three hours on a Friday for mentoring. So if you're interested, I think the price is 450 and you get a book and a few other things like that. But basically, it's a way of the Sierra Commons or a non profit just to cover our operating costs. Okay? So, thank, thank you all so much. See you next month to hear more. Thank you again.